Hi, I'm Scott, and I'd like to talk to you today about how to design new molecules by target-specific SAR analysis using Reaxis. As a chemist, we'd like to develop a lead candidate to help prevent type 2 diabetes, and we think that SCD1 is a, is a good target because SCD1-deficient mice are protected from insulin resistance and diet-induced obesity. However, there are two isoforms of SCD that are differentially expressed. SCD1 is expressed in adipose tissue, while SCD5 is expressed in the brain. So it's really critical for the success of the project to develop a potent inhibitor of SCD1 that minimally inhibits SCD5. To do that, there are two types of information that we need. First, we need to identify potent inhibitors of SCD1 that minimally inhibit SCD5. And secondly, we need to review the bioactivity data for both SCD1 and SCD5 in order to identify scaffolds that have sufficiently different R groups in order to conduct this, an effective SAR analysis. To do that in Reaxis, we will run substance searches for SCD1 and SCD5 separately in Query Builder. We'll pull those substances that have bioactivity data on both targets. And we will analyze those data in the heat map and export those data to Excel for further manipulation as well as for extensive SAR analysis to identify novel content to, to take to the lab. Now let's go to reaxis.com. In reaxis.com, we'll go to the Query Builder search platform. And on the right hand side, we'll open up a MedChem window and introduce target name and substance action on target into the workspace. We'll go to the taxonomy tree on the right hand side of the target name and enter SCD1 as the search term. It, it delivers synonyms of SCD1, which will then transfer over to the workspace. For substance action on target, we'll click on the search icon on the right-hand side and select multiple synonyms for inhibitors. Transfer those over to the workspace. And now we have a search for inhibitors of SCD1 and we'll perform a substance search to identify those compounds. We then filter those compounds for action on the, on the human target only. And we recover 2,125 substances. We'll go back to Query Builder. We'll clear the workspace. Okay. We'll open up the history section and we'll introduce those 2,125 substances into the workspace. Okay. I previously performed a search, a sim, an identical search on SCD5 and we recovered 2520 substances that inhibit SCD5 that act on only the human target. So now we're going to identify those substances that are in common to both SCD1 and SCD5 inhibition using the Boolean operator and performing a substance search. We identify 2067 substances, which we can now view in the heat map. The heat map allows us to graph targets on the x axis and substances on the y axis. And the value of each cell will be determined the level of potency against those specific targets. We'll include the structure drawn in the heat map. And the heat map looks like this. We can now select SCD1 and SCD5 as the specific targets, which we want to limit the, the heat map to. We can sort by activity. And we can scroll down to look for substances that act on SCD1 that minimally act on SCD5. And we can cherry pick a few of these rows and limit the search to just those rows. And for these analysis can be exported for further SAR analysis. Here are a few compounds that we cherry pick from the heat map. The first compound exhibits two orders of magnitude difference in potency between SCD1 and SCD5. Addition of the fluorine to the benzene ring at the end of the molecule retains, allow the molecule to retain activity against SCD1, but decreases the selectivity against SCD5. Addition of a trifluoromethylpyridine group replacing the benzene ring reduces activity against SCD1 and inverts the selectivity against SCD5. Looking at a different scaffold, we see that addition of the fluorine ring, a fluorine to the benzene ring at the end of the molecule results in the increased activity of, of SCD1. 
and addition of a furan group to the other end of the molecule also it results in increase of activity against SD1 while retaining some level of selectivity against SD5. Okay. Addition of a methyl group okay, off the pyrazole ring results in a dramatic increase in selectivity against SD5 and a small decrease of potency against SD1. The cumulative effect of the analysis of these compounds results in, uh, allows us to design a novel compound that's not a reaxis that contains the fluorine, methyl, and furan ring groups, which should allow us to design a molecule which has high levels of SCD1 activity and high levels of selectivity against SCD5.